Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO scale C44-9W locomotive from Ather and Genesis. My model is decorated in Southern Pacific's scarlet and gray speed lettering scheme. Atherin offers these models in two versions. The MSRP for a DCC ready model is $259.99. The MSRP for a model with DCC and soundtrack Tsunami 2 sound is $349.99. I purchased my DCC Ready unit in October 2022 for $220.99 for ModelTrainStuff.com. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The model comes in a sturdy cardboard box. Inside there are several pages of exploded view drawings. Atherin also included some extra axle end caps which is a nice touch. A two-piece plastic cradle protects the model. The engine is shrouded in flexible plastic to protect against scratches. The plastic handrails have foam inserts to keep them from getting bent out of shape. This is a good box that should protect the model for storage and transport. Southern Pacific's Dash 944 CWs, or C44-9Ws as they're often called, were delivered between May and December 1994. SP received 101 units numbered 8100 to 8200. These were the first new GE 6 axle units that SP had purchased since 1975. Many of these units lasted well beyond the UPSP merger in 1996. I found a photo of my unit, 8135, still with its original paint and number in 2001. A photo from 2004 shows the same locomotive in the Union Pacific flag scheme, renumbered 9599, so it was repainted and renumbered sometime between those dates. Photos show that UP9599 was still in service in 2018. I carefully compared the models to photos I found of the real SP8135 and I couldn't find anything wrong with it. Atherin even got some subtle variations in the shape of the snowplow right. The plow is correct for 8135. Some SP units had a larger, more squared off cutout around the coupler on the engineer's side. The paint on the engines is opaque and thin enough to allow the great detail on the shell to show through. The separation lines between the colors are sharp and the writing is crisp. The SP scarlet and gray look correct to my eye. Most of the tiny writing on the warning labels is legible with magnification. There are small voids in the large Southern Pacific lettering on the sides at the door seams where there would be gaps in the real units as well. Many of the grills on the sides of the model are photo etched and in some places you can see all the way through the engine. The handrails are made of a flexible plastic that should stand up to normal handling. In front the engine has operating ditch lights, freestanding grab irons, an uncoupling lever, MU cable, air hoses, and a snowplow. The cab has sunshades and mirrors and delicate windshield wipers. One thing I found disappointing is that some of the window glazing is sloppily installed. The front windshields aren't quite flush with the front of the cab, and a couple of the side windows are pushed in and slightly crooked. These things aren't that noticeable unless you really look closely, and I don't think the problem is bad enough to warrant a deduction, but it would be nice not to have to point this out. In back, the model has more freestanding grab irons. Details on the rear pilot are similar to the front, minus the ditch lights and plow. On top, the cab has more freestanding grab irons, and the antenna arrangement appears to be correct for the engine as built. The horn casting is in the correct location. The large exhaust stack looks good, but the appearance could be improved with a little black paint in the bottom. As it is, it's obvious that it doesn't go anywhere. The radiators have photo etched grills on the top. Even though it's hard to see from normal viewing angles, the models have a lot of freestanding plumbing detail under the sills. The air reservoirs on the right side appear to be fully round, or nearly so, and there is freestanding plumbing there as well. The trucks have separately applied brake lines. The axles with visible bearings have rotating end caps. All of the wheels pick up current and all the axles are powered. The engine has plastic McHenry knuckle couplers on both ends. The front coupler is at the correct height according to the KD height gauge. The rear coupler is high so I'm taking 5 points. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. There's no noticeable body wobble. The engine weighs 22.7 ounces. Drawbar pull peaked at 4.7 ounces on my force gauge. A lot of HO scale diesels pull in the 2.5 ounce range so this is a strong engine. On DC, all of the front lights come on at the same time. Brightness is dependent on track power. It's nice to see Atherin finally making models with lit number boards. The walkway lights are a nice touch. The rear light comes on when the model runs in reverse. I'm using my MRC Railpower 1300 to test the engine. The model starts and runs smoothly. With a good DCC decoder, it would probably run even better. There's a little bit more noise than I'm used to with modern models, reminding me a little of the old Atherin blue box growl. A sound decoder would help to mask some of that. To take the engine apart, first I'll remove the coupler screws and draft gear boxes. Then I'll loosen the screw in the bottom of the fuel tank and remove that as well. 
Now I can access the two screws near either end of the fuel tank that hold the shell to the chassis. Once these are out, the body will lift off the frame. Electrical connections use contacts between the body and the chassis, so there are no loose wires to worry about. The lightboard has a 21-pin dummy plug. To install a DCC decoder, you would just remove this and replace it with a 21-pin decoder. There's a rectangular weight in the rear held in place by two screws. This could be removed and replaced with a speaker and enclosure for a sound install. I'm going to leave this alone for now. I'm not a fan of plastic couplers, so while I have the couplers out, I'm going to replace them with KD 158s. The KDs drop right into the factory draft gear boxes. I got lucky this time and the coupler heights on both ends were right on. Let's see what we've got. One coupler was high, so I took five points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with 95 out of 100 possible points, a solid A on a report card. This model definitely gets a green signal. I think Atherin did a really nice job on this model. If you're looking for a Dash 9 locomotive for your modern era layout, then I think you might like it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. <laughs>